Yes, that's right, we're all expecting an online-only Apple April event sometime this month, which is definitely weird since Apple usually has an event in March, but that obviously didn't happen. Even though so many people were so sure that we'd have one on March 23rd, and eyebrows were shaved because of it. But thankfully, more and more puzzle pieces are coming together, so we're now almost 100% sure that we're getting an Apple April event. So what I'm gonna do in this video is go through all of the leaks and rumors that discuss new Apple products, and let you know which ones you should be expecting and which ones you shouldn't. So let's get right into it. The first thing I wanna talk about are the major points of evidence for why we're getting an April event, and it all coincides with the new 2021 iPad Pro, which didn't end up shipping in March like many expected it to. A couple months back in January, we got some leaked dimensions and CAD files for the iPad Pro, which shows that it's gonna be released very soon, since this type of stuff doesn't leak unless the product is almost ready to go. Then a month later, Mark Gurman, who is an incredibly reliable leaker, said that the iPad Pro is gonna be as powerful as the M1 Max, and this totally makes sense, since we're expecting the iPad Pro to get the A14X chip with eight CPU cores and eight graphics cores. And just a couple of weeks ago, 9to5Mac discovered mentions of the A14X chip within iOS 14.5 beta code, and this usually only happens right before a product is released. For example, beta code mentioning the new M1 Max leaked just a couple of weeks before Apple officially announced them in November of last year. And since iOS 14.5 is expected to release sometime within the next month, it perfectly matches up to the iPad Pro releasing at an April event. And to make it even better, 9to5Mac found that the A14X is based on the T8103, which is the codename for the M1 chip. So the two chips, will likely be very similar. And going even further, Digitimes reported that volume shipments of the new iPad Pro will begin in the second quarter of 2021, which we are in now. We then got a bombshell leak from Mark Gurman, claiming that the new iPad Pro will come with a mini LED display on the 12.9 inch model only, upgraded cameras, the A14X chip, a USB-C port with Thunderbolt functionality, and he said that it should be coming in April. And since he's one of the most reliable leakers, we can basically bank on this. Some of those features like the A14X chip, the Thunderbolt port, and the mini LED display are a huge deal. So Apple will absolutely wanna show it off during an event. So an April event is extremely likely to happen. And John Prosser is also banking on April for the event date. And finally, here's one more big piece of evidence from Weibo user Uncle Pan. Somehow, he got a hold of a sticker showing that a new unreleased accessory is coming soon which supports the first, second, and third generation 11-inch iPad Pro. And the thing is, the third gen model doesn't exist yet. It's the one that we're expecting later this month. And Uncle Pan mentioned that the new iPad Pro is coming in mid-April, so there's more confirmation. Now, if you're wondering which accessory this could end up being, well, I did some research and I think I know what to expect. I found the box of the iPad Pro Magic Keyboard case and the sticker looks almost identical from the format to the layout in the various languages. So this accessory is almost certainly an official Apple product. And I personally believe that it's a new second generation Magic Keyboard case for a couple of different reasons. First off, we've been hearing rumors that it should be coming alongside the new iPad Pro, which was supposed to be released at the March event that never happened. So April makes sense for a release date. And if you're wondering how Apple could possibly upgrade the Magic Keyboard, they actually applied for a patent specifically for a new Magic Keyboard case almost a year ago. The images show a slot in the hinge for the Apple Pencil 2, and apparently it'll also wirelessly charge the Apple Pencil at the same time, making it the perfect solution. Now getting into the next image, it shows a completely new hinge system, essentially allowing you to raise the iPad Pro much higher if you'd like to, 
or even use it in a new clipboard mode, which will finally solve the problem people had with the other Magic Keyboard, where you couldn't lay down the iPad Pro to write and draw. So in my opinion, if we're getting a new iPad Pro this month, then we're for sure getting a new Magic Keyboard case alongside it. Now, if you put all of the puzzle pieces together with the crazy powerful A14X chip, as well as the new 5G support that we're also expecting, it makes a lot of sense for the iPad Pro to finally support professional Mac apps like Final Cut, Logic, and Xcode, which has been rumored for some time now by John Prosser. So if they announce this, it's probably gonna come either sometime this month or later at Apple's WWC event in June. And now with the iPad Pro and Magic Keyboard out of the way, let's move on to another product we're expecting to come at this event, and that's of course the new AirTags, which have been rumored for a very long time. They're basically gonna be small little trackers that you can buy, activate, and place onto or into anything you'd like to track within the Find My app. So that way, you can keep track of your keys, your backpack, or anything else that you can think of. And since they'll be coming with the ultra-wide band chip built in, you'll be able to open up an augmented reality view in your Find My app and literally see your AirTag through objects like inside of your couch just using your iPhone. The battery life is gonna be excellent, at least a full year or two, and the best part is that AirTags will probably have wireless charging, since we've seen so many leaks and rumors pointing to that feature coming. And the way it's gonna work is incredibly simple. You just put the AirTag on the back of your iPhone 12 or newer for half an hour and then it's fully charged. Because I don't know if you know this or not, but the latest iPhone 12 secretly supports reverse wireless charging for accessories. Apple never mentioned this because they probably were gonna release the AirTags alongside the new iPhone, but the AirTags were of course delayed over and over again. Now on top of that, recent leaks and rumors are pointing to it being smaller than expected, being just a bit larger than a quarter, but around six millimeters thick. And according to Max Weinbach, they'll retail for around $39 each. But on the flip side, we did have some earlier rumors from Love to Dream that pointed to them having two different sizes. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this plays out. But either way, expect AirTags at Apple's April event later this month. Now let's move on to the one product that's probably coming at the April event, but there's a chance that it won't for a couple of different reasons. And yes, I'm talking about the rumored 24 inch fully redesigned Apple Silicon iMac. Last month, John Prosser tweeted that the iMac is ready to launch at any time. And on top of that, a new Apple Silicon iMac was leaked in an Xcode crash log, pointing to Apple already testing out the model on the latest macOS software. And to add even more evidence, John revealed that the new iMac will be coming in some brand new colors. And coincidentally, almost all of those colors perfectly match up to the new Apple spring colors that Uncle Pan revealed for some new Apple cases. And according to Max Weinbach, we should be expecting some new seasonal Apple Watch bands, probably with the same spring colors. And that's exactly what Love to Dream tweeted, new colorful Apple Watch bands. But the crazy thing is that the tweet was actually a reply to a question about the new iMac. So he agrees with that as well. So it's all starting to look like Apple could have a spring color themed event to reveal the new iMac. And then Love to Dream apparently also tweeted out that the new iMac screen is really big, bigger than the biggest one, which of course is referring to the 27 inch iMac replacement. So everything is really starting to add up, but I just have a couple of doubts. I personally don't think that the larger iMac is ready to go just yet, since it needs to come packed with a ton of power and I don't think that Apple is ready to reveal the faster M1X chip. So based on that, the larger iMac might not come until later this year. And here's where the problem comes in for the smaller 24 inch iMac. If the M1X chip isn't ready yet, then that means that the smaller iMac is only gonna come with the same M1 chip that we already have. And while that'll still make for a great iMac, fully redesigned for around $1,100 to $1,300, 
it's probably gonna disappoint some people if it does not come with an M1X chip upgrade option. Now, on the other hand, Apple could totally surprise everyone by announcing that M1X chip, but then it would make sense to also release the larger iMac at the same time, but I just don't think that it's ready yet. So this is definitely a toss up, so we're just gonna have to wait and see. And now let's get into the maybe section, starting off with new AirPods. Yes, we've had various leaks and rumors pointing to the AirPods 3 being delayed until later this year, but out of nowhere, a new leaker, Uncle Pan, came out and said that we should be expecting new AirPods at this April event, alongside the iPad Pro and new accessories. So I don't know if that means that it could be a new set of AirPods Pro and then the AirPods 3 are coming later. I don't know, we're just gonna have to wait and see. Now next up is of course a new Apple TV. A lot of people are expecting this to come for sure this month, but I have a couple of reasons to doubt that. First off, the current models of the Apple TV, especially the 4K model, they're perfectly fine for streaming video. So the only way it would make sense for them to release a new Apple TV is if they go all out in terms of the performance and focus completely on the gaming market. This makes total sense because we've been seeing leaks and rumors of Apple working on a gaming specific controller for many months now. And the A14X chip that we're expecting in the iPad Pro would be perfect for the Apple TV. So why not release them at the same time? However, here is where the doubts come in. Last month, Apple released a huge wave of new Apple TV trailers and teasers. And just a few days ago, they released a massive amount of Apple Arcade gaming content right out of the blue. So if they were planning to release a new Apple TV this month, it would have made sense to hold off on at least the new gaming push until the actual event to create more hype. So it seems like they are delaying the new Apple TV until later this year. And that actually matches up to a rumor we got from the verifier, saying that the Apple TV is not gonna happen until the fourth quarter of this year. But I personally think that it makes sense to release it at Apple's September event, since that's where Apple released the last two versions of the Apple TV. But I guess that anything can happen and they may just release it this month, so we're just gonna have to wait. Now moving on to more maybe products, we have the new iPad mini, which has been rumored for some time now. According to Uncle Pan, the full screen iPad mini is out of play for this month's event, and that fully matches up to a rumor from Kong, the most reliable leaker out there who said that the redesigned iPad mini is currently in early development, specifically in the design stage, so it's nowhere near ready to launch. Now this is interesting because it's been over two years since the iPad mini has been updated, so it's definitely due for a new model. And if they maybe, just maybe, update it this month, it'll likely have the same old design, but with an updated A14 chip that we already have in the iPad Air. But then again, Apple's iPad mini 4 went unchanged for over three and a half years before the mini 5 came out. So Apple could easily just do the same thing and hold off until they give the mini a full redesign. And then that way, they're gonna be giving the brand new iPad Pro models their full attention at this month's event. So I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see. And now let's finish off with a couple of products that I'm almost 100% sure will not be released at this month's event. We shouldn't expect any more MacBooks at all, since the ones coming up next are gonna be the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. And the production of those is apparently delayed until the second half of 2021, so don't count on seeing those until maybe the end of summer or fall. And then finally, there's the new iPhone SE 3, and all of the recent rumors are pointing to it coming next year, so don't count on that either. There you guys go, that's what you should and shouldn't expect at this month's April event, Hopefully you enjoy this video, and if you're excited for those products coming later this month, definitely click the circle above to subscribe, because we're gonna be getting our hands on them and testing them. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.